Good morning, everyone. This is Financial Literacy 101, and today we'll be talking about LGI Homes. Now, I'm very familiar with LGI Homes because I actually was going to buy an LGI home in the state of Washington and span away near the Tacoma area. That kind of all encompasses Tacoma, but nonetheless, I was going to buy an LGI home. Now, my first impression of an LGI home was very low grade. Um, <laughs> Now, LGI is the 10th largest homemaker in the United States, which is big, okay? They're doing really, really well. But let me tell you what I found out about the LGI homes. LGI homes actually make very, very beautiful homes. Is that the neighborhood I went into was actually beside the neighborhood that I actually bought into. So the neighborhood that I bought into in Washington State was a gated community. But right beside that, homes went down about $100,000. So... Meaning, like, say, for instance, if I bought my house for $350,000, the LGI home was around two fifty, two eighty, dollars and it, and it showed. Like, it's very expensive already to live in Washington State, um, nonetheless, in certain areas. And as you go closer to Seattle, homes become more and more expensive. So I went to the LGI home, and I'm just, like, looking at, uh, you know, uh, anoleum covering, not even granite, you know, countertops. I'm looking at black and white appliances, not stainless steel. But then when I went to a more prominent neighborhood, meaning people made a lot more money, um, I started seeing stainless steel and granite countertops. I'm like, is this a you know low income uh, house maker? And I thought that's what it was. But no, LGI actually make homes on the total income spectrum, making you know whether you, you make fifty thousand dollars or two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year. They make different types of homes. So I said, you know what? This is a great stock because they have been performing absolutely well um, for the past you know, five years, 10 years that they've um, actually been in um, business. But of course, they've been in business longer than that. I'm talking about as far as the stock review goes back to. OK, so give me one more second as I'm still setting up just a little bit here. But I believe that this could be a great addition to your portfolio, especially if you guys are trying to get into real estate or this construction properties when it comes to your investment portfolio. Look, a lot of you may have pharmaceuticals, which they're very volatile dealing with COVID-19 right now, gold and silver, um, <clears throat> investment bankers or banks period inside of your portfolio, car makers, etc. This could be a great addition to your portfolio. Now, don't let the stock price shock you, okay? Don't let the stock price shock you because quite frankly, quite frankly, this could be a great stock for you. OK, it could be a great stock for you nonetheless. So here we go. This is LGI Homes. OK, again, over the course of five years, they have been doing three hundred and seventy five percent of a return the past year. Fifty five percent the past three months, 44 percent. You know, I round up, guys. One month, 20 percent. One week, they've been up 12 percent. And today they are already up almost three percent. OK, they're almost up three percent. So this is absolutely good. Of course, I usually wait till I go a certain amount of time, but let's go right into looking at some options. Let's see if I can find me a long-term option. See, February 19, 2020, we have, this, this is how you kind of kind of do it. You have the election, November 3rd, November 4th timeframe. 
the economy needs to stabilize. COVID-19 may be still going on. These are all the things that I actually run through in my head, ladies and gentlemen. And this is what you have to do when it comes to investing your money. I don't want to do November 20th, even though the market may be great. But it's too close to the elections. And politics, believe it or not, is, a, is an entity inside of the in, investment markets because of investors, okay? Because they do everything. Who's going to be president? Oh, this president's going to do this. This president's going to do that. So this is very, very important. So I'm going to look out to February 19. I'm going to look at options, February 19. Very, very expensive options because it says it's going to go up to 130. Of course it is. Let's see how much this option calls. See, that's going to be a lot. That's absolutely going to be a lot of money. I don't think I'm investing $1,850 today. Okay, so then I ask myself, do I want to do a riskier option? Because I don't want to spend almost $2,000. So I go November 20th. And I see that it only dropped down to $11. Let's see how much that's going to cost me per option. I ah, $1,100. That, see, anytime you see, let's look at the implied volatility. The implied volatility, yeah, not, not, too, not too shabby. It's over 50%. I'm, look, I'm, I'm looking at it right here, guys. But nonetheless, uh, it, it's not swaying me one way or another. Okay. So again, I wouldn't do an option. See, this one ends next week. Let's see, this one's at $5.40. Imply volatility, 60%. Let me see how much one of these costs, $1,500. Nah, I'm not dealing with This is a stock for me because I have a certain budget, okay? And that's the thing. You guys should be investing by your budget because right now um, I have a lot of things going on financially, okay? I have a lot of things going on financially that I just can't even squander $1,600 into an option that I may lose, OK, that I may lose because we know options um, options are. How can I explain this? Option can be very, very safe when you do your research. And a lot of people make tons and tons of money off of options. Some people only do options. But a stock like this, I think that I'm going to just simply go back and probably invest one hundred dollars um, period in fractional shares. And that's why I love Webull and Robinhood, because I can go right in. A one like this, and I can put in a hundred dollars, and I'll say, okay, you almost got so zero point seven um, percent of a share, fractional shares. Let me deposit the funds again, one hundred dollars in Robinhood, because I don't have I don't have no other money that I have to actually invest because I'm not I'm trying to spend that much money. So it's been deposited inside my account. I have a hundred dollars, LGI Homes. Right now, if you notice, it's on a down tick. This is actually good for me. So I can buy low and sell high because the past week, ladies and gentlemen, has been up 10%. This stock has been performing really, really well. So I'm actually down 127. Review, I'm going to buy 100 worth of LGI Home. Let's see where I'm at. I'm already down 21 cents, but we know how that is. That fluctuates throughout the day. All right, let's get into it. LGI Home engages in the design, construction, marketing, and sale of new homes. It also deals with residential land development businesses. It operates through the following segments. Let me let you see that as well. Uh, Central, West, Southeast, Florida, and Northwest. Why does it, <laughs> have you noticed it said Central America, basically, United States, West, Southeast, and Northwest, and it just have Florida. But the headquarters is in Texas. Uh, anyway, um, the company was founded by Eric Thompson Lepar in 2003 is headquartered in the woodlands in texas and then again the listed name is lgih and it's a common stock meaning you have a vote for every share that you had now they have roughly 953 employees i don't believe that includes contract i mean that's the main hub of them all headquarters again in woodland texas uh what else is pertinent that's all their related collection items of 2013 ipo so it's, again i told you not that old real estate and also in the state of Texas, okay? Um, here is an announcement we may look into. I'm gonna come back to that one so we can read that story. Here are the quarterly earnings, they are up. Look at this, ladies and gentlemen. And I've been telling people this for a very, very long time during COVID-19. Developers are going in and buying up tons and tons of farmlands, especially here in Texas, and also uh, unutilized land and areas in all these states and we're going to i'm going to show you the states that lgi is in and it's quite remarkable because depending on how much money you have how much revenue you have if you can go and buy land in an up-and-coming area and just hold it 
I'm telling you, they're giving premium dollar for this land because they're going to make times through the amount. OK, they're going to make times through the amount because any house developer that's on LGI platform, LGI, you know, all other uh, D.R. Horton, Carruthers, all these big Huge names that we know in America that that actually build home, uh, Beezer Homes, Ashen Homes. So all these are certain types of developers and builders that come in and build whole entire neighborhood. This neighborhood that I'm in right now is only five years old. And the uh, uh, these particular blocks in my area was mainly built by Ashton and Beezer Homes. The home that that area that I was telling you about was actually made by... LGI homes, but the home that I actually bought was made by sound built homes. Okay, sound built homes. Now, some of these can be headquarter companies that actually work and have subsidiaries under them, but nonetheless, these are huge homemakers in the United States of America and they make an array of different homes. So, a stock like this could be very, very proper for your investment. And as you can tell, Q2 is what? Q2 is when coronavirus hit, and guess what they did? They went in and bought up land. They went up and bought old neighborhoods, reconstructed them, built them back up. This is how they're making money during a, a time like this, during a time of chaos. Everybody else is strambling, is strambling to um, acquire money to pay for bills and food, et cetera. These big large corporations, these big house developers are going in and buying up land and old houses, ripping them up building townhomes, being a single family homes, condos, et cetera, and making big, big bank. Now, none of these really has to do with LGI homes, so we won't go over that. But let's look at this story that they're referring to when it comes to LGI homes. It says LGI home announces entry into a Bakersfield market. They're just showing that they're inside of another market. So again, potential for growth, potential for growth, buy low, sell high. Let's move on to market watch. Now, Market Watch, in the last 52 weeks, look at this, ladies and gentlemen. Let me blow this up. I want to make sure you, I believe that you can see this. The last 52 weeks, look at this. Look at that. Last 52 weeks, $33 to $132. That's where we are in life right here. So you would invest into this stock back here at $33. You essentially would have made a hundred dollars off of thirty-three dollar investment, roughly. Roughly, that's the power of investing. I had a subscriber on last night. His name was Knowledge, and he was talking about being very uh, weary, being very reluctant to invest in because someone stole his identity and, and, and being fraudulent. But he put he did the right things. He contacted FTC. He did some other things to help protect himself. But it's time out for being scared of investing, ladies and gentlemen, because like I tell anyone, when you invest, you times three your savings, most likely. Now, we're going to go over the risks, and it depends on how you invest, how you invest. The key word you'll always hear me say time and time again, day in and day out, week out the week, and some of you already know what I'm about to say, is do your research when it comes to investing your money. You do everything else. You, you, you research the schools in the, the neighborhood, in the area for your kids to go and learn. You need to research when it comes to investing your money in different corporations and businesses. OK, uh, good morning, Nolan Baptiste. Thank you for seeing you this morning and everyone else in the chat. If you guys want to join me here live, please click the link in the chat room. All right. As we also can tell here, year to date has been up 81, 82 percent. 82% for the past month, 19% the past three months, 39% in the past year, 55%. It's phenomenal. Look at the EPS, earnings per share, $8.34. That Now, again, um, a lot of you guys who don't know what EPS is, is a good indicator to tell you if a company is operating out of debt or out of income. They are operating out of straight income and cash flow because the housing market for uh, a real estate investor is booming. They are buying neighborhoods, farms. They, I'm telling you, they getting it how they live. Okay, so um, let's see here. Let's see here. Let me move on. Let me move on to their website. So here's their website. Now these homes that I seen, the LGI was in Washington. They did not look like this. They got granite countertops. These cabinets, nah. They were straight trash, in my opinion. But again, 
they make in a different array of homes depending on your income level. Okay, look at the markets that they're in. Look at the states that they're in. Alabama, Arizona, California, Colorado, D.C., Florida, Georgia, Maryland, Minnesota, Nevada, New Mexico, North Carolina, Oklahoma, Oregon, South Carolina, Tennessee, Texas, Virginia, Washington, West Virginia, and whatever that other quick move in. But here's my point. They had this, this thing they have quick move in. I actually saw that up in Washington. So they're pretty much everywhere except places like South Dakota and North Dakota, like yeah, I don't know who's moving to South Dakota, North Dakota. They're not trying to buy or farm or do some sort of farming. As you can tell, there are in the hot areas when it comes to real estate. And this is important. Again, this is an investment that you need to do your research on. I cannot explain this and drive this home enough. You, you can't just say, oh, man, that looked like a really good stock. No, go and do your research. Look at the markets that they're in. Seattle million dollar market. Tacoma, three hundred and fifty to six hundred and fifty thousand dollar market. As you saw trauma down the coast, we already know San Francisco, Sacramento, million dollar markets when it comes to home. Phoenix is up there five hundred thousand dollar homes. I mean they, of course every state has their million dollar homes, but I'm talking about kind of the median price. Um when it comes to uh, Texas, just like California are so huge, you, you go further out, you got million dollar homes and then you got 250,000 home and, and some of them do really, really well. They have a lot of great appliances and upgrades, et cetera, right? Then you start getting over into Florida, okay? Um, I, I'm not familiar with the, the Florida area, so I won't get into that, but when you start getting close to DC and Maryland and Virginia, you're talking about million dollar homes, Mil million dollar homes. Now, um, we understand that back in the early, late 80s, early 90s, that's when D.C. was called Chocolate City because 70 percent of the residents in D.C. was black. They lived in the city. Now, granted, um, a lot of those a lot of those African-Americans lived in uh, apartments. OK, they didn't live in houses. They lived in apartments. OK, um, but there were still a large communities of black people that actually have houses. And hopefully those people held on to their houses because now that they're gentrifying um, Washington, D.C., and getting a lot of low income people out, those houses went up in value. Man, I can't even imagine fivefold, tenfold, because when you start to gentrify a city, uh, neighborhood by neighborhood by neighborhood, I remember my aunt, she lived over there by Suitland Parkway. This is an area in Washington, D.C., guys, that was really close to the naval yard. And these were low, these were projects, the, these were low income housing, Section 8 housing. When they moved and they lost, they lost that contract. Developers came in, knocked down those projects, and built up condos. Now they got waterfalls outside, gentrifying the neighborhood, putting the low-income people out, bringing the high-income people in. Very simple. And if people were to hold on to their property around that area, I'm telling you, there's money to be made. So if you're looking into buying a property, if you're looking into buying land then don't just go and buy land or a home. Look at pertinent areas, hot spots that you can actually buy land and houses from, okay? Uh, what are the future developments? Is it close to town square? Is it close to a hospital, to a fire department, to a police station, to a school district? All of these things matter when you are investing or buying property, whether it be property with the house or this property in, in a course of land. So that's very, very important. All right. Um, let's look here. Let's look at, let's look at Washington. Let's look in the Seattle area. Let's see here. They won't have prices. They don't want to scare anybody. Uh, let's see. Bremerton is an area that's, yeah, that's, it's, it's pretty far from Seattle, but, um, these are some, some pictures of the home, I guess. Okay. I'm just showing you some different things here. It says two story, three bedrooms, two baths, two car garage. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I, I can get into the weeds about this when it comes to LGI homes, but I have one more stock to go over because it says $1,500 in Bremerton. And the only thing in Bremerton is, is, a naval, is a naval base. That's the only thing in Bremerton. Okay. In my opinion, Bremerton is a very ugly city in Washington. 
it's a very ugly city in Washington. And if you guys ever been to Washington, you probably never heard of Bremerton and you probably never went because it's ugly. OK, <laughs> nonetheless, let's move on now for some of you who want to put a hedge of protection in your portfolio, like hedging your portfolio bonds. I can't drill this home enough, ladies and gentlemen. A lot of you are very weary. A lot of you, again, are very reluctant to invest. So I like to put you guys into those government and corporate bonds. Again, you do not, in my opinion, you do not want to invest in junk bonds. Junk bonds will give you great returns, but the risk level is out the roof because you may not get none of your money back. But when it comes to corporate and also government bonds, nine times out of 10, you get anywhere from two to 5% of your investment back. Now, granted, it's not as much as your regular stocks where you see, oh, you got 300% return. You got 40% um, return. With bonds, even in a down market, bonds still perform because again, bonds are a loan to that corporation. Bonds are a loan to the federal government. So you get your money back. Let's look at this one. Inspire Corporate Bond Impact ETF. In the past five years, as you can tell, around 6%. The last year, around 2%. The last three months, 0.15%. The last month, 0.34, uh, 0.39 rather. The last week they've been down 0.4 and today they're down. Nonetheless, again, we know that's a fluctuation in the market. So let's not get worried about that. Um, basically, IBD tracks an equally weighted index of bonds issued by the S&P 500. Component companies that meet biblically responsible investing standards. The listed name is IBD is Inspired Corporate Bond Impact ETF. All right, here's all the pertinent information. Again, they don't really have too much information about bonds because you have to go research the actual companies that is inside of, okay? So that's what we need to understand. So here's the analytics of the bond. Let's see here. Let's go back to five years. Okay, so as you can tell, you get steady income flow. It had a slight decrease. Then it started to raise back up. The, est the est uh, estimated movement average, the also the volume pretty good until COVID-19 hit around March, April time frame. And now it is coming back. OK, so all that looks pretty good to me. All that looks pretty good. So if you want to invest in a bond, I believe that this is a, a bond at roughly twenty six, twenty seven dollars per share. Let's look at what uh, Market Watch has on that particular bond. Let's see here. All right. The past 52 weeks, 20 to 28 dollars. That's roughly not too much movement there. Again, the past five years only did around six percent. And I want to say that's pretty much it when it comes to that particular bond. You get three cents for every bond you every share of that bond that you have. Again, dividends, not even worried about it. <laughs> you know, again, anytime that you want to make money. When it comes to dividends, you have to buy a large amount of shares. Doesn't matter what particular portfolio you have, you have to buy large amounts. Okay, let's see how my portfolio is doing. Um, I have some options out there. Let's look at that really quickly. Let's see here. So today I am up $137 and I'm only up at 1%, but nonetheless, I'm making money. You, you know me, guys. Long as I'm making money, it could be a dollar. Long as I'm making money, I'm doing well. Let me look at this GPMT option that I'm horribly doing. Man, I'm down $56 today. I'm down $56. Let me see if there's anything else. I just bought, um, what was that? LGI. Let me look at LGI really quickly. Let me see if it's up. Nope. I'm down 0.10% uh, on LG Homes. So won't even go into that. Looking like, um, let's see, my spiders are doing good. Let's see. Look at snow. Remember uh, snow frog? You got, oh, snow frog. J frog and snowflake. My bad. But look how I'm doing on um, snowflake. I'm, I'm doing okay. I only made $8. That's garbage. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, especially when I put $250 inside this investment at 2% return on my portfolio. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's all I have for you this morning. Thank you for joining me. Good morning, Charles Green. Good morning, Kendrick Teller, and good morning, Ashley Hawkins. Um, let's see, Kendrick Teller says, I think the only reason they built in the Dakotas is because of the oil boom. Okay, I didn't, 
I, you know what? I'm not going to, um, I didn't know that Dakotas had an oil boom. Um, I thought they were simply farming land. Now, let me see if I can go to, you know, I was about to end this video, but you know how I get guys. Uh, let me go to, was it Trulio? Trulia. I don't know if you can actually look for LGI homes. Let me see here. Let's look for Tacoma, Washington. No, no, Bremerton, right? Bremerton. And Bremerton is a low area in Washington, guys. The only thing there are naval folk. They got a home in Bremerton that's worth $25 million. Yeah. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Let's look at it. Uh, this is Bremerton, Washington. And let's put, let's see, all for sale, new construction. Let's do that. Maybe we can find some LGI homes here. Oh, let's see, house, let's do that. Let's put our price right around 400K. Get the number down. Oh, is this San Francisco? That's why. You ain't buying, look, they said you ain't buying no home for 400K in San Francisco. That is ridiculous. I was looking for Bremerton, Washington. I'm spelling it wrong. Give me one second, family. There we go. We should pop up some homes. Nope. There's no way all of these homes are this much money. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. This is a ridiculous family. But again, Soundview with States. I don't know who the builder is. I was trying to look for that um, build that they actually had on their website, okay? And if you notice, no homes, no homes in this area have um, brick. They don't do brick homes in Washington, really. Okay. Um, because it's already cool. States that have high heat like Texas, they're the ones who do brick because brick keeps your homes cooler, believe it or not. Okay. But anyway, I don't want to go into the weeds too much on this, but I was really trying to find, let me see this area. It says sell in Bremerton. Bay Vista. Let's look at Bay Vista. Bay Vista. Let's look at that. Let me see if they got Bay Vista in here. Here we go. We're about to look at some LGI homes. What in the world? Look at this. Look at this. Don't tell me. Uh, let's look at here. Nope. New construction. Let's just put um, resale, sell for owner, sell, I don't know. No homes yet, new listings, open housing, price reconduction. I mean, how much do these homes cost? That's what I wanna know. Let's go to 200,000. Anything starting over there? Nope. Let's go up to, one million family i don't want to bore you but as you can tell you can look at homes is there and i'm just looking at the different pricing markets um if you guys are looking to go and live in washington let me tell you right now five hundred thousand dollars okay stay with me here five hundred thousand dollars for how much square feet $500,000 for 2,500 square feet. $500,000 in Bremerton, no less. Ain't nothing out in Bremerton except the naval base. And it's ugly. Four bed, three bath. Four bed, three bath. Let's, let's look at some of these pictures. Oh, these are just model homes, okay? Oh, they put wood in there and carpet for $500,000. Guess what, ladies and gentlemen? I had that in my house, and my house is not $500,000. My house is not even $400,000 and I have 3,500 square feet. So that's why I moved to Texas and I got the hell out of Washington. You're not going to be paying me all, you're not going to be making me pay all this money for some drywall and some, and some recess lighting up here. You're not, you're not. If you got, and see, people love where they live at. Like my, my cousin, she loves living up there in the DC area, but she lives in an apartment and she pays almost $2,000. No, no, not going to do it. Not gonna do it. I love her to death, but I'm not gonna do it. 
I did not go back home. This home is very beautiful, but you can get this home for two hundred thousand dollars less when you move to places like Texas, Florida, maybe Arizona. You probably can get a mansion in Louisiana because nobody don't want to live there. Make sure if you move to Louisiana, you put your house up on stilts because you don't want the flood to take it away. Let me see what else. What other states? Georgia. You can get a nice house like this in Georgia for two hundred thousand dollars left. No, no, don't do it, family. Like, listen, when your family, like, oh, you're going to be away from the family. Hey, listen, you can come. You can come. I don't want to stay here. I don't want to say, look at this $500,000. Look at your slab. This should be all the way around, wrapped around the house. No, no, not going to do it, family. 2,500 square feet for $500,000. No, no. Look at this. Are you serious right now? Isn't this astonishing how much they're charging in Bremerton, Washington? Now, I'm about to blow your mind. Look at this. Now, some of you like, oh, if I move to Washington, I'm going to move to Seattle. Okay. Show you right. <laughs> Show you right. <laughs> they got one home. <laughs> they got one home under $600,000. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Look at this. I got to show you this. I'm so sorry. This is funny. This is a condo. This is a condo. $539,000 square feet. $579. Hold up. I got it. Are you freaking kidding me, Seattle? First and foremost, the sun comes out two days, uh, two days a month. Two days a month, the sun comes out. That's that song. The sun will come out tomorrow. Tomorrow. No. Okay. In order for you to live. And you want a house in Seattle? I'm gonna go ahead. And, I, I gotta do it to you, family. How do I? How do I um, go ahead and I search? Let me see. Let me see. Because a lot of you don't understand how expensive it is to live in these places right here. Five hundred seventy-nine square feet at five hundred thirty-nine thousand dollars. This is absolutely ridiculous. Somebody like, but it might be a little cute boogaloo. No, no. Yeah, you'll be in the city. Oh, yeah. Look at all the city pictures they're showing you. That is not your apartment. That's like the, the, the break room of your, of your condo. OK. Oh, wow. They put computerized. This is family. This is not it. I'm trying to tell you. Now, let me go back and let me do a search. Let me see. Buy homes for sale. Let's, let's look at this. Let's look at this. Uh, let's go all the way out. Okay, we're staying at 600,000, and this is Seattle area. Look at this right here. Tiny homes. Are they serious? Let me blow this up for you guys. Look at this. $259,000, one bed, one bath, 275 square feet. <sighs> House in Seattle. Five hundred twenty-five thousand dollars, eleven hundred square feet, eleven fifty. Two bed, two bath, eleven fifty. Okay, five hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. You know how much this home in Texas costs? Fifty thousand. This house right here in Texas costs fifty thousand dollars. Move to Seattle if you want. I heard somebody in uh, Starbucks. She's like, "Yeah, I'm moving up to Washington in Seattle area. Now working for Starbucks. I hope. <laughs> I hope." <laughs> I don't know what type of coffee you slinging. You're not moving to Seattle um, um, trying to buy a home or anything or even a condo. Look at this, family. $515,000, 1,700 square feet. 1,700 square feet. So, guys, I just wanted to show you that if you guys want a house in this area of Seattle, here's another area. Uh, square feet is one thousand at three hundred thousand dollars. Okay, um, slightly updated as you can tell, slightly updated, but a thousand square feet. Okay, some of you that may be enough, but I don't know if anybody want to pay a half a million dollars for a thousand square feet. Okay, I don't know. So I just want to bring some perspective on that. I kind of went into the weeds, but nonetheless, I hope hopefully you understand that. Sometimes it's better to invest in a company that's actually building in those places than actually trying to go buy one of those houses. Anyway, this is Financial Literacy 101.
learn money and be inspired and family go ahead and invest a little bit in your money and some developments inside of your neighborhoods and probably buy land or maybe just invest in the lgi you have a great and wonderful morning i'll talk to you guys on the next and thank you nolan baptiste you've been working hard my brother i do appreciate it i'm out